scripture reading today is from Psalms 1, Psalms 1, praise God, and we will read together the book of Psalms chapter 1, praise God. Okay, we're going to read together from 1 to 6, 1, 2, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. The ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And these are some of the psalms that we learned when we were very young in school and all like this. And we didn't understand fully a lot of these psalms that we knew by heart. But as we grew older, we understood more about what these psalms were saying. Amen. So it says in verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And so we as God's people today, we have to be so careful what type of counsel we take. Because everybody always has some sort of point of view on every subject you could think about. And as much as you are saved, as much as you might be spirit-filled and all like that, you'd be surprised to know that you who think that you know so much and know that you know so much, the ungodly sometimes want to pull your side and to counsel you. They can give you godly counsel. They can give you spiritual counsel. They can give you good advice. According to the scriptures, a lot of times, they were off track. But they want to guide you. And they want to give you advice and counsel. And so as Christians, we have to be so selective who we take counsel from. And it is true that sometimes, depends on, depending on who the person is, it could be a parent. It could be a best friend in school or college. It could be a neighbor. It could be somebody older than you and respectful. But we still have to be selective. We have to just be so queued up with the word of God. That if they should give you an advice. A parent, a godparent, an elder should give you an advice, the first thing you should do is to put it under the examination table of the word. Make sure the advice is lining up with the word of God. And if it is in line with the word of God, tell them thank you very much. But if they drift from the word of God, I'm not telling you to two of them. I'm not telling you to disrespect them. But all you have to do is to be discreet and tell them thank you and just go about your business. Don't even debate with some people because if you can't see it their way, it calls for argument. There are some people so bent on giving you their counsel, no matter how ungodly it is. If you don't soak it up, they start getting angry with you. From the time you say yes, 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 and soak it up, I'm telling you, you and them is best friend. But from the time you tell them I'm not in agreement with what you're telling me, it's not in line with the word, and so I can't take your advice. You will see a side to them that you didn't even know exists sometimes. I'm going to tell you something. There was one time when I was somewhere, and the Jehovah Witnesses, they passed by. And they began to tell me some of their doctrine. 
And when they told me one thing, I told them the other thing. When they tried to twist scripture on me, I gave them the right word. Now let me tell you something. They couldn't handle it. And by the next time I saw those people pass through the village, they didn't even look up to where I was living. They passed me straight like an exam. Because I didn't soak up the advice. If the, I took on board the council and what they were trying to tell me, man, they would have been living in my house. They would have been morning, afternoon, and night. Because once you could soak up some people's advice, you and them tick legs up. But as soon as you have a difference of opinion, you see another side to them. But God is trying to get us on target today. And he's telling us, blessed or happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly cannot give you the right counsel. They can't give you the right advice. I'm not telling you you can't be friends with the ungodly. I'm not telling you that you can't, you can't associate with them. But you have to know your limitation. Don't let them influence you till you start going against God's word. And going against the will of God for your life. Because they could mash up your destiny. It's just this morning in the Sunday school that, you know, the teacher was talking that sometimes when you see that you're around keeping body friends with the, some people and you see that they're leading you off the way that is godly. You have to cut them off. Jesus had to put out some doubters and some people who are not on the same wavelength like him. Because they will hinder your progress. So sometimes we have to watch our association. And I heard something some years ago, and I believe it's very, very, very true. Who you hang around the most will influence you to become just like them. So we have to be very careful. And I'm glad that this message is going forward today, you know, when students are going back to school. And so because it is so important, our association is very important. Who we hang around be the most, the most around, they will have an impact on us. They will have influence on us. And so we have to be very, very selective. If you want to live a godly life, don't hang around with these unbelievers at all times and have them influencing you. You may say, Pastor, do you know what you're talking about? I know exactly what I'm talking about. I wasn't always big. I was a student too. And there were times when I was in school with some people. And when I see how they had great influence for bad and for wickedness. I stayed clear away from certain people. Because they had influence. And a lot of other boys were going the way they wanted them to go. And in order for them not to spoil your good upbringing, you have to stay away from that crowd. Because that crowd is a dangerous crowd. You know, I went to school with a lot of ruffians. And when it came to school work and learning academic work, they would say school is rubbish. School work is boring. School work is a waste of time. Who needs education anyhow? I can go out there and achieve. I have this skill where I can do this, I can do that, and I can be more. I could be such a great sports star, I could be such a great music star, I could be such a great actor, I could be so much and so much. Who need these teachers in school anyhow? So they didn't even pay mind to them. A lot of them never even came to class many a times. They go about their own business, smoke their weed, do whatever they want to do, and they hang around their own crew. And play about with the girls and do all sorts of things. And I'm telling you something. When time came for graduation, a lot of these ones who you see were playing some kind of big done in the school, some of them came out and they didn't even get two subjects well. And watch them today. Many of them still have not even recovered because they wasted their years in school. Playing some sort of bad John and playing some sort of sweet boy and all sort of thing like that. Watch them today. Nothing to show for it. 
all the years in school went down the drain. I'm trying to say something today to somebody, especially young people. Remember to not take on board the counsel of the ungodly. Because blessed, happy, and successful will be the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But instead, what are we supposed to do? His delight is in the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in his law that he meditate day and night. Amen. Somebody give God praise today for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord has substance in it. The word of the Lord has wisdom in it. The word of the Lord has good counsel in it. And if we obey the word and line up ourselves with the word of God, we will come into victory. Come on, somebody. We will come into success. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And we find that as we read on, it's, tell, it's, it's telling us in verse 2 that we must delight ourselves in the, in the law of the Lord. You know, instead of us taking on board the counsel that's not good for us, let us take some passion again for the word of God. You're not too young, young people. You're not too young. None of us in this room is too young or too advanced to lose appetite or interest for the word. We, 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 we should all try to desire the sincere milk of the word that we will grow thereby. This word that we are reading here, this Bible, this word of God is not just for new converts. Every believer should desire and have an appetite for the sincere milk of the word so that we can grow and develop in God. All of us need the word. And we have to take in the word constantly. Job said, I esteem or I prefer and I, I, and I exalt the word of God even more than my necessary food. You could keep the chicken and the rice. Keep the dumpling and the and the, and, the, and the jerk chicken. But give me the word of God any day. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't have a witness in the house. The word of God is sweet. Hallelujah. It's sweeter than the honey. And the honeycomb. Glory to God. Amen. Where we all tell a young man cleanse his way. By taking heed. They run to. According to the word. Amen. We shouldn't let the word of God just pass us by. Because if we don't have the word of God inside of us, as soon as we hear every and every other counsel, it begins to think sound good to our ears. This, the, the, the trick of the enemy is to bring something before us, what we call it. What the enemy is coming to us with is counterfeit. He doesn't bring the real thing. He brings counterfeit. And I always go back to the story with the dog that had the bone in his mouth. Went to the water, you know. And saw another dog in the water. And got greedy. And said, I'm going to get that other bone too. He had the real stuff. And he let it go in pursuit of the shadow. And when he let go, what he had, all he ended up with was nothing. And let me tell you, people of God, children of God, we have the real thing. Amen. The word of God is the real thing. Amen. Hold on to it. Cherish it. Obey it. Apply it. And you will see good results. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This book of the Laman. Amen. Hold on to it. Meditate therein day and night. And so you're going to make your way prosperous. And you're going to find good success. Somebody give God praise for good success. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what God wants for us. Good success. He wants to bring us through. And so young people and everybody in the house. Let me tell you something. A lot of people will say to you. Why are you wasting time saying so you go to church for? Why are you wasting time saying so you, you trusting in God and praying to God? Why are you wasting your time for saying that you're a follower of Jesus? Why are you wasting your time for? 
Some people will say, God can't help you. You're wasting precious time. You do it your own way. You do it how you feel. You should do it. Copy other people. You don't see how they're getting through. And you see sometimes the enemy sometimes make the people out there who seem to be just doing their own thing seemingly to be attractive to us. And they seem to become the new role model of the young age today. They try to look at the footballers. They try to look at these celebrities. They try to look at these great people who are in high political office and great influential people. And they would say, well, these people don't have no God in their life. Can't you see how they're succeeding? But because, you, you see, when we don't know the Bible, we get fooled. We get fooled by the things that we see. It looks like it's real and it's genuine and it lasts, but it doesn't. The psalmist said, look at the people who out there in the world, how they're flourishing like a green tree. They look as if they have more than their heart could wish. They, they don't have any complaint at all. And he said he looked back again to see the same people them. And he said when he watched and he tried to look for them, he couldn't find them. They were all gone. They don't last too long. No matter what the enemy gives to anybody, he's coming back for it and he's going to leave them empty. Amen. He don't last. The things of this world, yeah, they're only temporal. But the things of God are eternal. Somebody give God praise in the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can advise anybody in the house today. Seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that shall be added unto you. Come on somebody. Amen. When you know the word of God, you can't go wrong. Amen. Hold on to it and cherish it and ablate, await because you will find good success. Amen. Anything that the enemy is offering out there, it don't last. And let me tell you something. We have seen enough. We have seen enough in recent years, recent years alone. How many music stars who are at the top of their game have gone off the scene recently? Many overdosed. Many could, had mental issues. Many, they, they, they couldn't cope with the success. They couldn't cope with their wealth. They couldn't cope with the, the, the pressure that they had. Uh, you know, as this big celebrity and many of them, they just overdosed and they just gone off the scene. Numerous of them, actors, singers, just call it movie stars, they're gone. Amen. It didn't last. They didn't have no enjoyment with the success. That seems to be our success to, to the human eyes. But in their hearts, they were saying, if this is what success looks like. If this is what success looks like and I've achieved it. I've got as much money as I, I, I want. I've got as much property as I want. I've got so much women. I've got so much this. I've got so much ev everything that people is out there. Crazy. I've got it. And they still felt so empty. They thought, well, if this is the top of the tree. And it feels like this is not worthwhile carrying on. And many of them, they're off the scene today. Because they did not have good success. They didn't enjoy the blessings of the Lord. But for those of us who have salvation, I came to tell somebody, you might not have a lot of finance right now, but little is much when God is in it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he added no sorrow with it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Do I have a witness in the house that Jesus satisfies your every longing? Hallelujah. Thank you for Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. When I've got Jesus, I have everything. Amen. I've got joy. I've got peace. I've got satisfaction. Oh, hallelujah. I've got contentment. Come on, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. He gives us joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. And full of glory. Come on, somebody. In a world of so much turmoil and so much situations all around it, he still said that, amen, that we are going to give, keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him because we are trusting in him. Amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I came to tell somebody to the whole and to what you have. Amen. Lest any man steal your crown, hold on to Jesus. 
Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Enjoy your salvation. Praise God with everything inside of you. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. And come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. Enjoy your salvation. For the joy of the Lord. is our strength. Amen. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Delight yourself in the word of God. Enjoy it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I understand that in many churches today, when it's preaching time, a lot of people walk out. When it's preaching time, that's when people take out their mobile phones and they start surfing. When preaching is on, that's the time when people go to sleep. After being up all throughout the worship and dancing and all of that, when the word time comes on, that's when they decide to switch off. But that's a big mistake. Because we need the word of God. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So when the word of God is being preached, especially when you know it's the undiluted gospel message, delight in it, amen, be enthusiastic about it, absorb it, amen, and meditate on it. Because when you do so, you will find that God bring you into your victory. Come on, somebody. Because the word will not return to him void. Delight yourself in the word. Hallelujah. And in his law, we need to meditate day and night. Don't just let the word pass you by. Think about it. Meditate. Bring it back up like the animals. They regurgitate and they chew back over. Chew back over the word. Amen. Thank God for Minister Curtis's ministry. He got his sends out the message. We can listen back again. We can hear them again. Amen. Share them with somebody too. Amen. So that they could be blessed. Amen. And the word of God goes on to tell us in verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. Hallelujah. God's going to make us flourishing, man. God is going to make us bloom. Hallelujah. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. I came to tell somebody in the house today that when you delight yourself in the word of God, you're not going to be one of those people who operate in as if you don't have no sense of direction. When you look at the world today, you see a whole set of people. They have no sense of identity. They have no sense of purpose. A lot of them, a lot of them have no sense of direction. And so that's the reason why the, the ungodly counsel is tripping up a lot of them. Because they don't know where they are. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they're going. They have no sense and purpose for living. But when you know the word and you delight yourself in the word of God. The Lord will give you direction. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we must... Realize that when we delight ourselves in the world, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. We're not going to look droopy down. We're not going to look perplexed and confused. You look at the world today. Look at politicians. Look at people all over the world. And you could see the confusion spirit. Yes. Spirit of confusion is let loose all over the earth. But when you serve God and you're sticking to his word and live in obedience to his word, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. That bringeth forth his food in his season. You're going to look good. Amen. Amen. His labor so shall not wither. But whatsoever you do it shall prosper. Somebody give God thanks for prosperity in the house. Amen. Amen. Anything we put our hands to it will be blessed. It will be successful. And when some people see us prospering and successful, everything we put our hands to, they want to know how you managed to achieve it. How did you get such a skill? How did you get such an ability? But your help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When we serve God the right way, delight ourselves in his word, the Lord is going to make us flourishing. And we're going to be fruitful too. Amen. We're going to bring forth fruit in due season. Amen. 
let us hold on. If you don't see your breakthrough yet, don't give up. The word of God says, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we will reap. Come on, somebody. If we faint not. Amen. And the word of God say, even if you're sowing in tears right now, one day we will reap in joy. Come on, somebody. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing the precious seed, shall doubtlessly come again rejoicing, bringing in his sheaves. Come on, somebody. We will be fruitful. We will be fruitful. We will bring forth good fruit in our lives. Because we are delighting ourselves in the word of the Lord. Let us understand. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.